Bonnier Bay. Welcome to To the Contrary, a discussion of news and social trends from diverse perspectives. Up first, mixed signals on breastfeeding. Breastfeeding moms held nurse-in protests at airports across the country this week, opposing Delta Airlines' ejection of a breastfeeding mother, her husband, and baby from one of its planes this fall. The protest comes six months after the federal government launched an ad campaign urging new mothers to breastfeed or else. Delta Airlines has since disciplined the flight attendant who handed the breastfeeding mother a blanket to cover up. The federal campaign, meanwhile, focuses on the so-called dangers of not breastfeeding, such as increased infections, allergies, and childhood obesity. A new oh, no, Bonnie. The society's message is clear. Breasts are for sex. The nursing message barely competes. You know, as a breastfeeding mother, I have to say, yes, we know breast is best, but using a blanket sometimes, maybe that's not such a bad idea. This was not a wardrobe malfunction. This was breastfeeding. Can we give mothers a break? Not really. Not if they know what's best <laughs> for themselves and their children. <laughs> All right, you two go at it now. <laughs> Listen, I, I do think you have to use some judgment, but you know, to me, guilt is the mother's milk of motherhood. <laughs> First, we feel guilty because we are trying to breastfeed as long as six months to a year, which is what the American Academy of Pediatrics tells us to do. Now, we have to feel guilty if in a situation like on an airplane where our baby needs some milk, now we're afraid we're going to offend somebody. You know, I just think we need to let women take care of their babies and try to give them a break when we can. You know, I, I'm very tall, my husband's very tall. We've got really big kids and they look older than they are. And I can tell you just from, from as, a, as a, nurse, a nursing mother, people will look at your kid and they think something's wrong with you or like you're a child molester because you're nursing your kids. So, you know, I, I, I try to use a blanket wherever I can, but it's amazing the things that people think are appropriate to say to you or not say to you um, as a as a yeah, Such as, as su such as. Such as that looks disgusting. I don't want to see, I, you know, I don't want to see okay. you, you nursing. Now, I personally don't want anybody other than, you know, my, my family to see my breasts, so I will try to cover up. But, you know, we American So if you're women, covered up, they tell you it's disgusting? No, 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 but if you're not covered up, uh, if you're not covered up, I've heard people say things to other women or people, or people um, have no problem saying, you know, that child is really old. If your child can bite or talk, you shouldn't be nursing. You know, we do know nur uh, nursing is best for your kids if you should try to do it. And I think people need to leave American women alone on this issue. But I also think we should try to use some of our own best judgment and try to cover up. I mean, the whole world doesn't want to see your breasts. But, you know, the, 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 the mothers who I think increasingly do get it, and I think the ad campaign by the government is, if anything, late in coming. Mm -hmm. uh, doctors have not encouraged breast breastfeeding until very recently. Uh, but uh, the society is overwhelmed with... Uh, breasts as sex objects. Mm -hmm. So it is going to be very difficult for people seeing a mother breastfeeding to disconnect from the overwhelming <laughs> message of the society and women are enablers mm -hmm. because women themselves are into all kinds of, uh, uh, um, what do you call it? Display. Of no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about enhancements. Oh, yes, the, 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 the silicone the, breath. Yeah, the, yes. the, 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 the operations and such, and, and that's not for breastfeeding, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's because a society, including women, have bought into the notion that uh, the breast, which is always a beautiful sexual part of the woman, is now the be-all, end-all, and we've got to get the breast of society used to understanding the enormous health benefits of nursing. Can, can we uh, take that attention from us women and look at America society as a whole? Here we pride our country as one which is so diverse, different ethnic groups, 300 languages and dialects spoken. The world is not just about us, the nursing mother. The world is about who is sitting next to us in the airplane, right next to us. Can you imagine an Arab man, a Muslim, or some Asian male from, from Asia with a child right next to you, seeing you open your, your shirt and breastfeed? Now, I breastfed myself too, but there are ways to be discreet. There are ways to be considerate. There are special clothes that are made for women who breastfeed. And throwing a blanket over would not suffocate the child. I don't understand why she wouldn't do it. Well, now, on the other hand, that airline stewardess may be too arrogant. And this September 11 culture has given so much power to the airline uh, attendants and the TSA people. These women, the young kids with power, 
they can stop you from catching your plane if they want to search you. Well, you know, and so that's the, the culture that we have. Uh, to the extent that, 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 that you can, you, you, you ought to do that. And I know you may have a big baby and may be difficult, but to the extent that you can, because essentially what you're doing is titillating a whole bunch of men who've been taught to see what you're doing as sexual. And you don't want to be part of that. And that's reason enough, it seems to me, to try to cover yourself. Sure. And I, I think she probably Well, do the breastfeeding moms who get militant about it hurt? Other women who are trying to do it and be well, discreet. I do think, I think you so. need to, to have some judgment. And Eleanor's right. The society is such that you know people associate breasts with sex, and and this is certainly a circumstance where this is really about nurturing a baby. There's nothing more pro-life than breastfeeding. Uh, you know. People also don't understand how difficult it is to keep up that breastfeeding. A lot of women, I couldn't pump, you know, express the milk. It just didn't work for me. And so, you know, it, it is hard. The practical reasons make it such that there would be situations where you just had to feed that baby. You know, what would be ironic is if the flight attendant in this case just happened to be, you know, a woman that was dressed for some sort of music, music video showing the breast, the butt, and everything else. <laughs> But had a problem, you know, watching this woman uh, not cover but up. But the flight while she attendant was, was disciplined later on, and she it, should you know, have been. It, right, exactly. It, I mean, to throw him off for that is sounds like a bit of a throw him off the plane. Sound, the whole family <laughs> sounds like more than just a bit of a power. Trip. Absolutely. You know what's so interesting about the story is the number of people that actually took the time to blog about this issue. Men, women. Um, it seemed to be people from every sort of socioeconomic uh, level talking about this, and I think uniformly people believe a little bit of discretion is important, but breastfeeding your child is best, and that this, this flight attendant was awful. All right, why can't we just all get along? <laughs> from fringe idea to federal policy. This holiday season, single mothers will be getting a lot more advice from Uncle Sam about how to live their lives. The message? Get married, don't cohabit, or have children out of wedlock. But is the message resonating with its intended audience? President Bush's Administration for Children and Families, run by Dr. Wade Horn, has committed 500 million taxpayer dollars over five years to subsidize more than 200 faith and community-based marriage programs for young Americans. Libertarian opponents see this as government infringing on people's personal lives. Some women's groups say Horn's marriage initiative preaches against abortion rights and prolongs abusive relationships. The program is now four years old and evidence that it's boosting marriage rates is slim. One pilot program which counseled unwed teen couples found 46% of mothers said they were almost certain they would marry the fathers of their children, while 26% said they had a pretty good chance of getting married. So, Michelle Bernard, uh, a, a, a report that also came out this week showed four in ten American children, 37%, almost four in ten, now getting, being born out of wedlock. This coming at the same time as we're now four years into this marriage initiative. Does it show it's, it's a flop or what? Yeah, it is a flop. I mean, and, and one of the things that we should be talking about as, you know, as, the, as this administration is pushing these policies are the many disincentives that are written into our laws for people not to get married. Let, I mean, if you talk about Social Security, for example, if you're a, if you're a mother who's a stay-at-home mom, um, and your husband decides that he wants a divorce, or you decide you want a divorce and you haven't been married 10 years, you're not going to get any Social Security benefits because of the way our Social Security laws um, are written. You know, it is a disincentive for women to go into the workforce. It's a disincentive to get married because we know so many marriages fail. So some of the things that we should be talking about is how we deal with Social Security laws that discriminate against women, how we deal with tax laws that discriminate against women who are either out in the workforce or decide to stay at home and be, you know, be, uh, be stay-at-home mom. You think, or who goes you in think and women who are having ch children out of wedlock uh, are thinking about Gee, you know, uh, I would marry the guy except for my um, <laughs> social security benefits. No. I think it's more like there. And, and and what was interesting about this re report out late this week was that teen pregnancy, 15 to 19 year old, is at a record low. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas the ones who are having the babies now out of wedlock are at 20 and 30 something.